Okay, so now we will uh, prove one of the most important exercises, which is uh, that if A and B are any elements in a group G, okay, they, and if N is a natural number, then order of, uh, I'm sorry, then A inverse B A raised to N will be always equal to A inverse B raised to N. A. So this is the exercise we will prove. Now this has nothing to do with order directly. So let us solve this exercise and then see some connections. Now I want to show that uh, A inverse B raised to N A is equal to A inverse B the whole power N. Okay, where what is this N? This N is a natural number. So let us call this statement that we want to prove. I will call it PN. And what is PN? A inverse B A raised to N is equal to A inverse B raised to N. So this N nth power goes only to the element B. And A inverse and A remain as it is. Okay, so this is the statement we are going to call PN. So we will prove this by induction. So we prove we prove that PN is true by mathematical induction so we will what is this what is the first step of mathematical induction the first step of mathematical induction is try to prove the result for n equal to 1 so prove p1 so put n equal to 1 in pn what will you get if you put n equal to 1 in pn? If you put n equal to 1 in that pn statement, you will uh, get you will get a inverse, this is pn, okay? a inverse b a raised to 1 is equal to a inverse b raised to 1 a, right? And this means that uh, a inverse what is the first power of A inverse B? It is as it is. So A inverse B A is equal to, and what is B raised to 1? B raised to 1 is also B. So it is A inverse B A. So left hand side is actually equal to the, actually equal to the right hand side. So P1 is clearly true. So P1 is true. Now the second step of induction is uh, assume the kth step. So step 2, I will write the step 1. Step two says that assume that uh, PK is true. Assume that PK is true. Means uh, what will I assume? Means assume that A inverse B A raised to K is equal to A inverse B raised to K A. So this is the step that we'll assume. I will call this step star. Let us move to the step three. The step three in induction is uh, prove PK plus one. Prove PK plus one. So what I am supposed to prove? So I am supposed to prove that A inverse B A raised to K plus one is equal to A inverse B raised to K plus one A. So I will start with the left hand side. So what is the left hand side? The left hand side is A inverse B A inverse B A raised to K plus 1 is equal to A inverse B A raised to K star A inverse B a the first power but uh, this by our assumption this is by our step star we know that by step star this can be written as what this can be written as a inverse b raised to k a multiplied by a star that is a star everywhere okay i'm not writing that star it doesn't mean the star is gone out star is there okay what is this the first power will be a inverse b a 
now when i use associativity i will put brackets smartly so when i put the brackets smartly what will i get a inverse star b raised to k star bracket a star a inverse star b star a and this a into a inverse is actually identity correct so this will become a inverse star b raised to k star identity star b star a and identity into b is b so i can just replace that by b so i will get this is a inverse star b raised to k star b star a because this is b and b into b raised to k into b again by associativity let me put brackets here so i will use associativity here also and that will become b raised to k plus 1 so this is a inverse star b raised to k plus 1 star a and uh, which is nothing but a inverse i will not write the star now omit the star so this is a inverse b raised to k plus 1 a so this is what is our right hand side so what have we proved therefore we have proved that uh, therefore we have proved that a inverse b a raised to k plus 1 this was our left hand side right and this is our right hand side which is equal to a inverse b raised to k plus 1 a which is our right hand side which means that this is pk plus 1 so pk plus 1 is proved and once pk1 plus 1 is proved this means that by induction by principle of mathematical induction the statement pn is true what is the conclusion of principle of mathematical induction therefore by principle of mathematical induction pn is true pn is true for all n this is the conclusion of mathematical induction but what is pn this means that a inverse b a raised to n is equal to a inverse b raised to n a okay and hence the problem is completed so this proves the above problem okay now let us solve this uh, next problem which is interesting so if i take a in a group and if i want to if i know that the order of a is 5 then order of a inverse is also 5 in general i'm trying to say that if a is in a group then order of a and order of a inverse okay both these uh, numbers they have to be one they have to be same so the element and its inverse have the same orders so this is a very easy solution so what i will do is i will let order of a to be equal to uh, suppose i say order of a is m okay and uh, order of a inverse is equal to how much order of a inverse is some different number n so we want to actually show that uh, m is equal to what we want to show that m is equal to n because we want to show that order of a is the same as order of a inverse right now i will write the first part of that so part 1 i will write like this so part 1 part 1 i will say that uh, let order of a be equal to m correct now of order of a is equal to m then this means that a raised to m is how much a raised to m will be equal to identity and m is smallest correct and uh, m is smallest and also we know that also we know something else we know that a inverse look, look at this particular statement okay order of a inverse is how much order of a inverse is n means a inverse raised to n must be how how much means a inverse raised to n that must be equal to how much that must be equal to identity why since 
order of a inverse is how much order of a inverse is n correct now we will expand this particular statement what is a inverse raised to n equal to identity this means that it is a inverse multiplied by star i mean to say a inverse star a inverse how many times uh, this is equal to identity how many times am i multiplying to each other i am multiplying n times correct now what i will do is i will slowly transfer 11a to the right hand side if i when i do that transferring of 11a to that side means what therefore what will i get a star a inverse i am actually putting a in the, on the left hand side so which is equal to a star a star a inverse star a inverse a inverse okay is equal to a star e now this person will become identity right so therefore how many a inverses have remained uh, here n minus 1 because one of the a is gone so star 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 a inverse is equal to a right so this means that this means now these people are how many these people are n minus 1 times okay and i will continue this job and i will start sending each and every person on that side so what will happen a stage will come where nothing will remain on the left hand side and only identity will remain and then this a will go on that side and you will start getting how many you will get how many a's on that side you will get n times the a so all left hand side a inverses have been pushed to the right hand side and this will finally give me what identity is equal to a raised to n that is a raised to n is equal to how much that is the uh, a raised to n is equal to identity correct this is what i have obtained right but we know but we know that uh, order of a was how much how much was the order of a in the above part just look above we have in the part 1 we are working in part 1 in part 1 we have uh, assumed that order of a is how much order of a is m correct means this m is the smallest m this m is was this m is the smallest such m right and now we have obtained that or a raised to n is equal to identity right so this order of a is equal to m right by assumption and we have got that a raised to n is identity so by above problems what can you say does m divides n or n divides m so by above problem you know that if such a situation occurs that order of a is m and a raised to n is equal to identity okay then uh, we have, we will get m divides n because the role of m and n are interchange now as compared to the above problem right in the above problem we have seen that if order of a is n and a is to m is identity then n divides m now here you have a situation that order of a is m and a is to n is equal to identity so in that case now we can say what we can say that m must divide n so by part 1 what we have got that m should divide n so similarly now you can understand that what will i do in my part 2 in my part 2 what i will assume is that let order of a inverse be equal to how much let uh, order of a inverse be equal to uh, n right what is order of a inverse order let order of a inverse is equal to n instead of order instead of assuming now this left hand side or instead of assuming this now we will assume this okay so so let order of a inverse be equal to n okay and uh, we know that a a is to m is equal to how much a is to m is equal to identity why since order of a so what will this mean this mean that a inverse raised to n is equal to identity because by definition n is smallest correct n is smallest and i will do the same calculation as i did in the above part and similarly as in part 1 what we will again get conclusion we will get the conclusion in this case we will get the reverse calculation in this case we will get what we will get that n divides m 
Okay, so A and A inverse have interchanged the places now, and M and N also have interchanged the places. And I will use the same logic. In the above part, we shifted A inverse to the from the left hand side to the right hand side and made A. But in the second part, we will shift A inverse to the right hand side and convert all. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. In the second part, we will shift A from the left hand side to the right hand side and make it A inverse. As uh, but in part one, we did what? We shifted A inverses. From the left hand side to the right hand side, so the same uh, idea will do, and I will get the conclusion that n divides m. So we have two statements with us finally that m should divide n and n should divide m, right? So hence, from part one and part two, so by part one and part two, we conclude that m divides n and n divides m but um, but if you have m divides n and n divides m then what can you say about m and n then we can say that m is plus minus n correct because if you have two numbers suppose i take 3 and minus 3 okay then uh, what will happen we know that 3 divides minus 3 and we also know that minus 3 divides 3 okay so Minus three divides three, so you cannot say that the two numbers are equal. Correct. So if m divides n and n divides m, then the two numbers may have different signs. But this will not happen in the uh, in in the case that we are working because we know that what because m and n are orders. Correct. They are orders, and we know that order is always positive. So m and n cannot be negative. so this means that m has m can be either plus n or n can be either minus n but m is equal to minus n is not possible because uh, because we know they cannot be negative so m is equal to n or m is equal to minus n but this is not possible right so this concludes that m has to be equal to n but who was m and who was n m was order of a and n was order of a inverse so we have proved that order of a is equal to order of a inverse okay now let us uh, show that if a and x are in the uh, group g okay then order of x inverse ax and order of the element a both are always equal right so what is x inverse ax called x inverse ax is actually called the conjugate of a conjugate of a so we are trying to prove that element and its conjugate have same order in order of element a and its conjugate what is the conjugate of a x inverse ax have same orders so how will you prove this so what i will do is now uh, i will assume again by the same strategy that order of a is uh, m and order of its conjugate is n and i will prove that m is equal to n by the same logic way that we have done above so let us assume that order of uh, a is suppose n and order of x inverse ax i will assume to be m okay i want to therefore show what i actually want to show that uh, m is equal to n right to show m is equal to n so i will say okay do it by part 1 now what is part 1 saying me part 1 will say let us assume that order of a is equal to n that is this is what i am assuming means n is what means n is the smallest such number such that n is smallest number such that a raised to n is how much a raised to n is equal to identity remember n is smallest i am writing here n is smallest again okay and uh, what do we know and we know that we know that order of x inverse ax is equal to how much x inverse ax is equal to m this means that x inverse ax raised to m will come up to be how much will come up to be identity because it is the order correct 
and now this re reminds me of the problem that we have proved about by induction that this m will go inside and it will only become the power of a so this means that this will become x inverse a raised to m x is equal to identity how this came this came by induction problem which is discussed above and now i will transfer this x to that side this means that x into x inverse a raised to m and x on the right hand side i will have x inverse and i will multiply left by x e and x inverse to the right so this means that this means that this will become identity star this will become a raised to m star and this will also become identity so at the same time i have transferred x inverse from the left and i have transferred x from the right and this will also become identity and this x into e will also become x into x inverse and therefore the right hand side is actually identity okay because it is x into x inverse right so this is the uh, identity on the left hand side identity into a raised to m will again become identity uh, a raised to m and on the left hand side now i am only left with what a raised to m because it has multiplied the identity so what we have got is that order of a is n okay and we have that order of a is how much order of a is n and we have that a raised to m is also equal to identity so again by our problem which we discussed in the previous uh, in this class that in such situation what can you say about the numbers n and m in that case you can say that n is the smallest right we know that n is the smallest so can n divide m or should m divide n since n is smallest n must divide m so by part 1 i got that n divides m again by using the same logic in part 2 what will i assume there i will assume that order of uh, x inverse ax okay order of let me drop this order of x inverse ax is equal to m okay and uh, and i will use that m is smallest in that case and i will again do the same type of calculation that we have done in part 1 and in that case we will say since m is smallest i will get that m divides n so by both these conclusions we know that m and n are both positive numbers because they are orders and therefore now i can sure shot say that m must be equal to n and therefore what is m and what is n m was nothing but order of uh, x inverse ax which was conjugate and n was nothing but order of a so we have concluded that element and its conjugate must have the same orders we will uh, prove that order of ab is equal to order of ba where a and b belong to g where what what is a group where g is any group okay it may be abelian it may be non abelian okay so no matter what the group is order of ab is always equal to order of ba and now this is very easy because in the above exercise we have proved that order of the conjugate x inverse ax is always the same as order of that element okay so this is known right holds in a group always now what i will what i will do is i will replace the variables smartly so i will replace a by ab if i replace a by ab the above result will become order of x inverse a i'm sorry i will replace x a by ba so that this will become x inverse ba into x is equal to order of ba so the variable a is replaced by what the variable a is replaced by ba and now i will again smartly replace the variable x by the variable b so i will get order of b inverse ba into b is equal to order of ba and when i use my associativity inside uh, here i will write it as order of 
B inverse B A B is equal to order of B A and I know that B inverse B is how much B inverse B is identity so this is order of identity A B is equal to order of B A and this will give me that finally order of A B identity into A B is A B so order of A B is equal to order of B A okay so this means that in a group order of a into b is always the same as order of b into a it means order of a star b is always equal to order of b star a hence we have proved this result okay